my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feeling great. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast. I'm your co-host, Dr. Mike Akinfora, and today I have with me Blake Kocha. Blake, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? I am awesome. I'm going to read you Blake's bio. So Blake is a National Academy of Sports Medicine certified personal trainer. She went to Marin High School and graduated 2011. After that, she attended University of Nebraska at Omaha, UNO, for those of you who know where that is, for two years and then transferred to Vatterot where she got her NASM certification. She's competed in five fitness shows, and she's placed in the top five in all but one, and she was sixth in that one. She enjoys showing horses, spending time with her family and friends, lifting weights, and spending time at her family's lake house over the summer. Blake, how are you? I'm awesome. (laughs) That is fantastic. Cool. So the first question we ask people when they come on the show is tell us about your journey. All right. So three years ago in January, I went through a really bad breakup which I got really sad and sadness just kind of took over everything. I just, I was just dwelling on it. Um, So pretty soon I wasn't going to class anymore and my grades started to drop. I wouldn't eat for probably like four or five days and then I would eat, which brought on a lot of weight gain because my body didn't know when it was going to eat again. Um, I got to the point that I just hated life and I would pray every night when I went to bed that I wasn't going to wake up the next day. By the end of March, I went up four jean sizes. So when I realized that, I started with the trainer at a pub- at a public gym here, a club gym called Lifetime. So I was going to start with the trainer there, and I was going to go until I lost the weight that I had put on, and then I was going to quit. But before I started seeing any changes in my body, I started to realize that I was me again. And I was uh, happy again, and I was eating normally, and I wasn't having dark thoughts anymore. So I, basically, I brought myself, with my trainer's help, I brought myself out of that depression. So I stuck with it, and my body started changing, which I got really addicted to the results. So I started researching competitions and competitors because I thought it would be so cool to do one someday, but I never thought that it would actually be me up there on that stage in front of all those people doing it. So in August, I started to go to school um, for my NASM certification, which was a year-long process at Batterot. And I wasn't super open about my past because it brought up a lot of bad emotions. Um, At that point, it was still a negative experience to me. So in September, I was sitting in my personal development class. And the guy that we would watch every day on the TV, he was talking about using our past to better ourselves and to bring a better present. So it hit me that I had my heart broken, so I would get depressed and put on weight which would allow me to end up in the gym and it would push me to become a personal trainer so I could give people a second chance at life the way that I was given a second chance. From there, I saw it as a positive experience. So I was a lot more open about everything that I went through from probably January to March is when or January to um, April when everything was pretty dark for me. Um, in June of the next year, I was talking to Nima Romney on Facebook And he told me that I needed to send my ex a message thanking him for everything he put me through and everything that I experienced to show the universe that I was thankful, which would set balance in the universe. So I talked to my mom and dad about it, and they were like, no way, you're not doing that. That's that's a bad door that you don't need to open back up. Well, I still sent it, and I had the intent that he was not going to reply because I wanted to set balance. I didn't want to open up that door again. I didn't want to become friends with him. I just wanted to set balance in my life. Mm. I sent it and he didn't reply. But the next day, one of my friends, Derek, he texted me and he um, he works at New Don, mm-hmm. which is a nutrition store here in town. And he told me that JT, that owns Skate Fitness, which is a private gym in Omaha where I'm from, mm-hmm. uh, he came in there and he actually asked Derek, my friend, if he knew any trainers because he needed one ASAP. So my friend sent me JT's information so I could call him, and I did. So I was gone the beginning of the next week, and he was gone the end of the next week. So probably about a week and a half later, I went to his gym, and I sat down, and I talked with him. And within five minutes of us talking, he had hired me. And he was like, when you work here, you're going to do a show. And I said, oh, my God, I've always wanted to do a show. And he goes, well, you're going to do one, and you don't have a choice. So I was hired there in June, 
And then just a few months later in November, so November of last year, I had my first competition and then I did four more the beginning of this spring. So basically, I don't believe in coincidences, chance, or random. I believe that everything happens just as exactly as it's supposed to, but only if we let it. What I mean by that is if I would have fought back against fate three years ago, I wouldn't be where I am right now. I felt everything as deeply as I could, which felt like torture at the time, but it actually turned out to be a blessing. I never planned on being where I am right now, but it is exactly where I need to be helping you become a better you. That's awesome. Thank you. You want to talk about synchronicity and things happen. Nima is actually going to be on the show in February as well. So I think the way these schedules fall is that Nima will be right in front of you. So Dr. Wanda Lee had interviewed him, and he's scheduled to be on the show and aired the week before you are. So that's pretty oh, that's cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. That was out perfect. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned everything that happened and you saying you don't believe in coincidences, chance, or randomness. That's what Nima speaks about is all these things happen as they're supposed to happen and we attach certain emotions to them. We re react to what the reality is, which is really an interesting way of looking at things. Yeah. So let me ask you, what motivates you personally in the gym? Oh, there's two things. So the first thing would be the dark time that I went through. When I start lifting really heavy weight in the gym, I just take a moment and I close my eyes and I take myself back to that time when things were so bad for me. And I just kind of, I just regroup and I let that pain push me. And cool. then I also, you know, because I wake up in the morning at 4.30 every morning and I go to the gym and train, and then I lift right after I'm done training my clients in the morning. So some mornings I don't want to wake up, and I just I just have to take myself back to that time. And I'm like, okay, this is what happened to me, which brought me here, and I just I have to get up and I have to do it. Then the second thing is, is the results. I love watching my body transform, and off-season is so much different than while you're prepping for a show. So – at off season right now, I weigh about 117 pounds and I have 12% body fat. But then when I step on stage, I weigh about 105 and I'm at 6% body fat. So to watch that whole transformation happen, it's it's pretty cool. And that's another thing that pushes me. I take a lot of pictures as I'm going through the process of both just to compare. I think that's really cool, the taking of the pictures from your off-season weight, and then you don't let yourself get out of control with your weight in, in, in an off-season. That's correct, right. right? Yeah. Yeah, He, my boss, he has this on a meal plan all year round. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, so I know what motivates you now in the gym. Tell me about what excites you about training clients. Um, I get excited when they get excited. So I train all across the board. For example, I train the mom that has the two kids that just, she's in there, she wants to lose weight for her husband. And then I have a little girl that she just turned 15 last month, and she has Down syndrome, and she's also autistic. So I get excited when the mom does more weight than she did last time when she's squatting. Or I get excited when she loses weight, you know, when she sets on the scale and her body fat percentage is down. And then I also get excited watching the little girl who went from not being able to squat the barbell. We actually had to start squatting, so I would put our smallest box under her, which is what you do box jumps on, mm -hmm. and it's probably about mm, eight, nine inches tall. She's very short. She only comes up to my belly button, and I'm only five foot. And I would have her hold a 10-pound ball at her chest, and she would just sit down to that box and stand up. That's how she learned to squat for her first couple months with me. Wow. And then last, yeah. So then last week I put her under the barbell and I was like, all right, girl, let's do this for real. And she got really frustrated when she couldn't do it at first. Mm -hmm. And I just talked her through it, settled her down. And within probably five, seven minutes, she had it down. And it was a pretty cool, cool experience for everyone at the gym. And her mom started tearing up, which was, that made me happy that her mom was that happy for her. That's really cool. Yeah. That, that's really exciting. Uh, prior to becoming a chiropractor, I had a degree in sports science. And the same thing, when you see people break through those, those barriers, it's just so rewarding for you. Yeah. 
And, yeah, that's uh, the best way to put it. <laughs> yeah, it really is. So what do you see as the biggest challenges for people who want to get fit or change their body or even change who they are? The biggest challenge is commitment, which is followed by just having discipline. Sure. It's easy to say, hey, I'm going to wake up every morning at 5 and I'm going to go to the gym before I go to work. But to actually commit to that is really hard to set your alarm two hours before you normally have to get up. Sure. Then once they start going before it hits that one month mark, it's really easy to fall out of it and not stay so disciplined to it. So, you know, I've read that if you, after you've been doing something for a month, it becomes a routine, but I still think it's kind of easy to fall out of that routine. It can be. It is. It, where, it's where you're at in life, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. It's funny because when when people make these New Year's resolutions, they generally are done with that resolution and have looked at themselves as a failure before the end of the month. And oh, most yeah. people in in that month, they're, they're looking to lose weight. So yeah. I don't know what it is about that barrier for people, but you, you hit that, that spot on. Yeah. So what I do is I'm always available to my clients. Meaning if they text me, I'll reply in no more than 30 minutes unless I'm sleeping. My training sessions are only 30 minutes long. And that's because I believe in coming to the gym, getting your butt kicked, and leaving. I don't believe in going to the gym for hours on end to socialize. So I actually, I only check my phone in between clients for my other clients. I don't reply back to my friends or family in between that time. Because the gym time is totally, it's, it's for my clients. I measure my clients once a week so I can see their progress. I measure them every Monday. They come in, and before they do anything, they know we're getting measured. I keep record of their workouts. So the weight that they lifted last week, I have. The weight that they lifted five months ago when they first started with me, I have. Then I can say, hey, last week you squatted this. This week you actually squatted 20 pounds heavier. And also, I think the biggest thing is I'm their biggest fan. You know, I let them know how awesome they are. The little girl that I talked about earlier at the end of our workouts, I always fist bump her, and I'm like, you're awesome. And she's like, I know, Blake. And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so point that it's so repetitive to her that she just knows she's awesome, which I, I think is awesome. Cool. Um, I'm just curious, do you are you writing in a book, or do you keep that on? Is there a computer program that you use to track? Um, so I do the same workout plan for everybody, yep. and it, it goes four weeks. Okay. And then what I do is I, I actually write, well, I come, I do it on a Word document. I just make a table and everybody's, everybody's on different workout plans because everybody has different goals. Sure. So what I do is I work out, I write up everybody's workouts and then as we're training, I'm filling in the numbers. That's the only thing that's changing. Cool. And then I just keep that on record in the gym in our cabinet. Awesome. When, when I'm done with the month. Yeah. So what do you find the most rewarding thing about training to be? The relationships that I'm creating are the most rewarding for sure. I become friends with all the people I train. They don't just come in and train. I actually hang out with a lot of them outside of the gym. This job is actually a lot more than just picking the weight, having them do it with proper form and a safe environment. As a trainer, you become a counselor for these people, and you actually learn more about their lives than probably some of their close friends and family know. That That's fantastic. What's one of the things that you could tell someone right now that they could do to start their own journey? So in the gym, if you can afford a trainer, get one. They push you so much harder than you could ever push yourself. My boss actually trains me, and sometimes it's to the point that I throw up after we work out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's nasty. And then if you cannot afford a trainer, I suggest that you get a partner that you go to the gym with that will push you and spot you when you're lifting heavy and not let you slack off. Yeah, it is uh, It is really, just to interject, it is super important in going to the gym that you either have a partner that's going to push you or, or even better, a trainer that's going to know exactly what to do and, and how to push you. So what about outside of the gym? What do you do? Um, instead of drinking pop at dinner, have a water. Um, if you're eating fast food on the way home, make a balanced meal instead. You know, four to six ounces of grilled chicken with a half a cup of rice and a cup to a cup and a half of green beans. That's pretty generic for male or female. I think for, for people that are of your age and your generation, this is a game changer for people eating healthy. 
because you see it all the time in the gym, and, and I've seen it for the last couple of decades, that people can have a great workout, and then they just go to McDonald's to eat. Right. It, it, you've really got to plan this out, and it's not that hard. Yeah. I've seen if you, what is it, um, not, something is along the lines of not not plan failing to plan is yes what is that failing planning to failing to plan is planning to fail yes yep a hundred percent a hundred percent yeah i actually i meal prep every sunday for the week so i'm not stuck eating empty calories for my meals yes so when i'm hungry i just pop in the microwave or sometimes i <laughs> i take my food to the nail salon i take it to the hockey games on friday and saturday nights i take my food everywhere you just know what's in your food you know what you're getting and yeah. and that's what people need to understand in meal planning especially you don't have to be training for a competition but just tra you know training and planning for life and we yes. do the same thing even with a 13 year old and 11 year old we plan meals and cook on Sunday so that we don't have to, you know, it's like, oh, no, there's nothing to eat. Let's go get pizza. And that makes life that much easier when it comes to nutrition. Yeah. So how do people get in touch with you, Blake? Where can they find you on the web? Um, either my website, which is www.blakecocha.com, um, B-L-A-I-K-E-K-O-C-A. -E and from my website, you can actually email me. And I'm also, I love Instagram. I'm on Instagram all the time, which is at K-0-C-A-C-0-L-A, which is Coca-Cola, kind of <laughs> an off thing of my last name. <laughs> so yeah. what would you like to say to people in closing about life? That if you want something to go for it, and if you're, if you're going through a dark time right now, it's not always going to be dark. There's there's light at the end of the tunnel, no matter if you see it or not. I didn't see it, and I, I was just kind of, I was going through the motions. And as you see, it, what I was going through led me to where I am right now. And that can be for you, too, if you let it. Blake, that was awesome. Thank Thanks so much for being on the show today. Thanks for having me. Oh, it was awesome. my pleasure. I am sure people are going to see and hear a lot more of you going forward. And um, thanks again, and we'll talk soon. You take care. Thank you too, Michael. Bye, everybody. Bye.